You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good evening. Good day. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, you know what? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us. I'm going to try to give you good, detailed information succinctly in an entertaining manner. That way you can learn something new, have a little bit of fun, and be entertained all at once. As always, my name is Paul. My name is Rob. Yeah, you said it all. Glad to be here. Thankful that uh, you're joining us. Yeah, um, questions. If you would send in your questions, askdroneu.com. There's a couple of topics I really want to hit, uh, and I was going to jump in the community and ask, but I thought I might bring them up here too. But, you know, more and more people are getting into NFTs. Uh, I have a friend in LA who's been selling his aerials as NFTs. Successfully? Successfully. Um, hmm. The guy, Justin, who runs drone camps, he's been a, he's been around for a very long time. He just sold an NFT. He said it was the first NFT, but at first glance, I was like, I don't think this is the first, but maybe I don't understand it. Maybe he sold like something else that I just don't get, which is totally possible, but he's been selling them. And so I want to get questions in regarding, you know, uh, alternate means of making money off of your media, because nowadays, honestly, there are so many options. It's kind of hard to differentiate the most profitable options of selling your media. I mean, Rob, we could literally have uh, hire someone in here to list all of our photos as NFTs, to do copyright work, you know, to do social media. Like there's, I mean, there's so much that one can do with their media. And I mean, you think of your library of media and you are essentially like Disney at this point where you're sitting on great, photos, great videos that other people might really want. And what I've been learning a lot about is that often in the NFT world, it's more of a financial uh, asset world where you're buying an asset and it's getting flipped, 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 flipped. Like I saw one- That's the dangerous part of it. That is. Those projects where, yeah, the that one is. at the end of that chain is getting hurt. Mm, or the, the drone pilot who sold for way cheap now seeing his stuff go for 10x what it was going for. I've seen that. And so I think uh, it would be cool. But to it get... only goes for that. I'm sorry. It only goes for that because so many other purchases have happened. Correct. Not because of who he is or because the, the image is that beautiful. It's like a popularity thing. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. But anyway, I would uh, love to address this. Um, I would also love to address, uh, we know more and more manufacturers are popping up and we would love to uh, hear some questions regarding that. And there's a couple of people I kind of want to get on the show. Uh, I'm not going to mention their names right now, but there's a lot of stuff that that's kind of moving in the shadows per se. And I would like to bring some of it to light. Uh, some of the agriculture stuff, some of, you know, there are, I would say 20 to 30 separate legal issues coming out of the one remote ID case. Wow. Right? Like you think about all the parties that are named in that federal lawsuit as having partaken with the FAA in illegal actions that violate federal law in order to create remote ID. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yes, that's very important to say, Rob. Thank you for the uh, the, the humility. <laughs> um, as the uh, arbitrator's son here, I I just want to like, whoa, 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 you know, <laughs> but I mean, there, there are some major implications coming out of this case, groups, public safety groups, um, certain agencies, certain uh, private entities are named in this lawsuit. And let's say remote ID gets rescinded. Are there going to be follow ups to this? Will this hurt certain reputations? Will it help them? It could go either way. Frankly, we just don't know. And so um, there's a lot kind of coming down the pipeline as far as conflict of interest with various parties. And hmm. I think it could be really, really, really interesting. Remote ID, remote ID could end up being a, a, a catalyst to a lot of other stories. That's my point of bringing this up. So I hope all of you have been following up on it. I was actually uh, talking to one of our good friends 
Um, he likes to go by Fix Wing Sing. I have other names for him. Uh, <laughs> he's my boy. Uh, but uh, talking to him about this this weekend and, you know, uh, as we have been really focusing on developing props for manufacturers over here and working on that, some things have kind of gone to the wayside like me writing articles. And so there's an opportunity to talk about all this, but I will stop my rant and let you know that there are many topics that we could address vis-a-vis questions. Would love your help. Ask at DroneU.com. Hi, my name is Zane. Love your show. I'm 61 looking for a new challenge. Purchased my first drone to learn how to fly one and currently studying for my part 107. I saw one of your shows with Christian Malika and the book that he wrote. And my question is, would this be a good book for me to purchase to become a better pilot or should I say a better videographer and picture taker? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for the question, Zane. And uh, good questions. Actually, it's cool that you brought that that podcast up, that show up, Christian, give him a little bit more pub. And I know that you have a lot of respect for him and for the book. And I, what can be learned from it? I really do. I think Christian is a is a stand up guy. And uh, I think the depth of his work is frankly um I, I think it's awesome. I think it's uh, commendable as well. I mean, that book, which is right behind Rob's head, really does go into detail of understanding how to build these FPV drones, how to fly them, how to kind of uh, traverse through the sequence of things that you should learn in FPV flight, like starting off kind of gentle and moving into things like acro to be able to do, you know, really cool like barrel roll shots and whatnot. And so I think Chris Malika nailed it. I, I mean, honestly, hmm. I have no um, financial obligation for full disclosure. I just think I think that book is amazing. And I think what he did was amazing. And he's not a sponsor of the show. So there's no uh, what is it called? There's no conflict of interest. Um, that said, there are two questions that he asked, Rob. Can I be will it help me be a better pilot? I guess there's three questions. Should I buy the book? Will it make me a better pilot? Will I be better at video? I think there's an important um, historical uh, outlay or chronological order of events that have kind of taken place um, in the drone industry since the evolution of the drone industry. Let's just call it 2010 when that Parrot AR drone first came out. And what I'm saying is in order to be a good pilot, let's say in 11 or 12, you had to be able to build gimbals, put them on a Phantom 1, fly around super, super slow and smooth, understand line of sight flight very, very, very well. I mean, you're looking at the drone, you're controlling the drone. And then it moved on to flying line of sight and doing line of sight flight uh, in a very close proximity way, action sports, you know, doing really complex, super fast shots, but in a very controlled, super smooth manner, right? That's kind of the evolution of uh, the hierarchy of skill, I would mm -hmm. say. And then we moved into what I call the head on the swivel. And, and that's kind of like the stuff that I was doing with wake surfing, right? You have to keep eyes on the drone, line of sight, but you're also framing your shots. So your head is literally on a swivel, you know? And so you had to be good at line of sight and FPV on consumer drones. And then we get the evolution of FPV drones, right? And FPV drones have no sensor assist. Um, they're really full manual, but that opens up a world of new potential shots that you can get. Yeah. So a good pilot went from being good on a consumer drone, head on a swivel, to being able to fly consumer drones and then also fly FPV drones. Okay. Then let's take that a little further. The next evolution was essentially as FPV drones became enclosed, we saw lots of ducted fans and GoPros being attached to these drones to become Cinewhoop. So in order to be a really good drone pilot continuing to make money, you've got to be a fantastic consumer drone pilot, line of sight, and FPV, head on a swivel. But now you also have to be a good FPV pilot so you can fly a Cinewhoop so that you can do these tours through buildings, fly inside, fly out. And so this evolution has gone from, you know, flying line of sight really, really, really smooth to line of sight, FPV, head on a swivel, flying an actual FPV drone, turning into a Cinewhoop and being able to fly in very confined spaces to get really super smooth one shot wonder videos. 
right? I say that's kind of like the it's evolution. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> Whew, I feel like that's kind of the evolution. And so to answer his question, will buying the book make him a better pilot? I absolutely think so. I absolutely believe that if you read that book, you get into FPV drones and ultimately Cinewhoop drones, that it will force you to be a better pilot. Um, that's kind of the reason of why I wanted to build the office space race course four years ago. It's because I knew this is where we were going. I wanted to have a place to practice really confined space flight. And I don't mean like confined space like law enforcement where they just like blow through a door and then, you know, yaw around and Merry Christmas. No, I mean like really cinematic smooth motions in really confined spaces. Mm -hmm. So now to answer his question, will it make him a better pilot? I think the answer is yes. Why? You will be able to offer more deliverables to your clients vis-a-vis Cinewhoop tours inside, vis-a-vis flying consumer drones, head on a swivel to get beautiful shots indoors and out, right? You have uh, a larger tool set with more skills that you can offer your client. Yeah, but I think you definitely have to think of it in those terms where you are um, increasing your skill set, not not switching. And what comes to mind is when Sean was here and you took him out to the obstacle course flying a Phantom. Mm -hmm. And so Sean Taylor, world champion, FPV racer. Has Night done a, Fury. Night Fury, thank you, has done a course for us um, in, in Drone U membership. And I just remember that he had a incredibly difficult time flying that Phantom. Yeah, it was, I was actually surprising. A, meets, yeah, that was very surprising. But he literally is a world champion FPV pilot, right? And so you definitely want to kind of keep doing both. Yeah, and that's a good point too, Rob, is that you could start on the FPV side and not be able to fly line of sight consumer drones very well, mm -hmm. or the opposite, where you learn to fly consumer drones really, really well and then move into FPV. Right. What I love about this and what I think should be encouraging for kids is that when it comes to flying drones, it can always be more challenging. You can always go further and further along uh, the rabbit hole, as we would say, yeah, and and progress those skills. But it was interesting how Sean kind of proved the point that you could be phenomenal at FPV, but it doesn't mean you can fly a camera and make money with it, you know? Uh, far from it. Far, far yeah. from it. Yeah. I mean, I would imagine, you know, he, he, he would have picked it up relatively quickly. Yeah. But it was not uh, riding your bike kind of, riding a bike kind of transition. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more, which goes to show rusty pilot syndrome is real, everyone. You need to be flying, but to Rob's point, you need to be flying your Phantoms, your Mavics, your Mavic Airs, and also get into FPV drones. Mm -hmm. And I will say it's really reinvigorated my love of flight. Um, I, it makes me feel like I'm actually flying. Like it, I, I really <laughs> love it. So. You should see him out in the parking lot whenever uh, you'll be flying. He'd been flying <laughs> Cine whoops more. <laughs> And here comes a FedEx truck with both doors open. Can I fly through your truck? <laughs> that seems to be happening uh, a lot more. Yeah. I literally, I flew, I flew through the uh, old person home van successfully. That was fun. Flew below your Jeep, I don't know, five or six dozen times. Oh, for did fun. you really? Yeah. It's got a four inch lift, so it yeah, shouldn't be too hard. Yeah, it's, it's been, it's been fun. <laughs> I took the sign from the doctor next door and put it on the sidewalk and started flying through that too. Then I took one of these tables and started using it as an obstacle in the parking lot. But actually, I didn't make it through the FedEx truck, <laughs> <laughs> in all honesty. So now I have like this challenge of like, I'm going to get through the FedEx truck. <laughs> so, <laughs> and they're here almost every day. So. Yeah, so we'll have some fun with that. Yeah. But um, And by the way, that was with the Cinewhoop, so the props are enclosed. So even though I hit his chair, it was fine. So Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that said, to answer your question, yes, I believe it'll make you a better pilot. Will it make you a better videographer? Potentially, I think you're going to understand the differences in controllability from Cinewhoop cameras like your GoPros and your decased GoPros and your run cams and whatnot to, you know, really having more manual control of your camera on something like an Inspire, a Phantom, et cetera. So will it make you better videographer? Uh, potentially. But I think the answer is very clear. Will you become a better pilot? Yes. Highly recommend uh, his book, um, FPV Flight Dynamics. The book's fairly technical, though, isn't it? Yes. So I guess be prepared for that. I think that that is university textbook level status. Like, it's really, really well done. 
hmm. but not like university textbook dry where there's not a lot of photos and visuals. I think that that book is built for lots of different learners, which is why I think he did such a good job. Hmm. So, That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So yeah, go buy it. Yeah, check it out. It's on Amazon. We'll give you a link in the description below. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. Thank you for the question. We will see you next time.